Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Children's Tumor Foundation NF2 Day Research Webinar. My name is Simon Vukel. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for the Foundation. And uh, before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping rules. You, you see this on screen. Uh, the audio for this event, uh, you're likely listening to it through your computer. Uh, if you do have any issues or if you have anyone who would like to listen in um, who can't be on at the moment, um, th those are the phone numbers for them to call in. Uh, they will not be able to see the screen, obviously, if they call in, but this webinar is being recorded and will be available online um, either later today or tomorrow uh, for you to watch and share with other folks. Um, the, this uh, webinar is being captioned. At the bottom of your screen, there is a closed caption button. Please click that. If you do have any issues, please let us know through the chat function. Everyone is on mute at the moment. Um, if you have any questions, please send them through the chat function within the Zoom app. Uh, if you have trouble doing that, you can also feel free to email us at info at ctf.org uh, and we'll try to monitor that as well. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can, um, but uh, keep in mind that uh, we may not get to everything, but we will do our best. Um, before we get started, um, the reason, sorry, we're uh, just going through our slides here. So the reason we're doing this today, it is NF2 Awareness Day, uh, as you all know. Um, which has been part of NF Awareness Month, uh, which hopefully you have all been celebrating along with us throughout the month. Uh, last week was Shine a Light on NF Day. Uh, we're proud to announce that over 326 buildings and icons around the world lit up in blue and green or green and blue for NF2. Either way, as you look at it, uh, in tribute uh, to all forms of NF. This is a picture of the Colosseum in Rome. This was a new one uh, for us this year. And we had, uh, as I said, 326 locations light up. Uh, today, we are also encouraging people to wear green and blue on May 22 for NF2. Uh, we've been following on social media, and we see that a number of you already have been posting your pictures. Uh, we encourage you to keep doing that and use the hashtag EndNF and hashtag EndNF2. Uh, and we'll be sure to tweet and retweet, and likewise, we ask you to do the same. The reason we're here today to talk is uh, no doubt the press release and announcement you saw this morning on our social media and on our website and through your email box if you are subscribed uh, about the NF2 Accelerator Initiative. We're very excited about this and here to take you through this and, and what it means for the NF2 community and NF research is Annette Bakker, uh, the president of the Children's Tumor Foundation. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I would like to walk you through the NF Accelerator, but before doing that, we have had a couple of questions um, relevant questions over the last couple of weeks specifically about what the role has been of the Children's Tumor Foundation in NF2. So first of all, I would like to remind you that our mission is to drive research, expand knowledge and advance care and the mission says for the NF community, but that is obviously for the NF1, NF2 and schwannomatosis communities. To give you an idea on funding, I think I can proudly say that the foundation over the last 10 years has invested a total of $10.4 million in NF2 and has also invested in 71 NF2 grants. Um, what is the impact? Um, we are all about impact at the Children's Tumor Foundation, um, showing how many grants you funded and how much money you have um, um, uh, spent on NF research is one thing. The other thing is, of course, what was the impact of that research? So the NF2 discovery, going back into what is called the Green Bible, which is the book of the Children's Tumor Foundation or the National Neurofibromatosis Foundation, it became very clear that the National Neurofibromatosis Foundation was involved in the NF2 gene discovery. Over the last few years, the last 10 years, we have really been proudly built a comprehensive preclinical pipeline. And what does that mean? That means that those are um, models, both cell models and animal models of NF2 that then allow you to test drugs or any opportunity and bring that to the clinic. So NFPC stands for NF Preclinical Consortium. And today I will walk you through Sinodos because that has been the most um, uh, impressive program that we as a foundation have run ever, I think. 
Um, the, we have run dedicated workshops over the last few years. I say two animal models, but in fact, two types of animal models, both mice and pig models now. We have been um, very involved and we have funded um, the NF2 diagnostic criteria. And in fact, all the NF diagnostic criteria are under revision now. Because of the massive interest of pharmaceutical companies in NF2, because of all the investments that we are making, we are now offering, since about four years, an NF2 target scan service. And that means that we have someone on our staff who is looking through all the publications that come out for NF2 and actively extracts from all these publications what the new mechanisms are and then tries to map them onto which drugs are available for pharmaceutical companies. And then based on that, we reach out to those pharma companies um, to see if they would be interested in a collaboration, in exploring NF, et cetera, et cetera. The, um, what is also very important is through all our different grant mechanisms, we have really invested in what we call today the hot topics, whether that is gene therapy, we've also invested in protein replacement and also in immunotherapy. If you go to the next slide, it gives you an idea of what the impact is in numbers. So our $10.4 million has at least attracted $5 million in follow-up funding. That $5 million is probably an underestimation of the reality. First of all, those are the numbers that we have until 2015, but it's also difficult. We're reaching out to all the researchers to let us know what kind of follow-up funding they have um, received based on our seed funding, but it gives you an indication that our funding is really followed up by um, next level funding. We have now um, identified through the target scan at least 40 molecular mechanisms Six out of the clinical trial, six out of the three clinical trial candidates that are in the trials today for NF2 are um, have had have had some kind of uh, investment from CTF, larger or smaller. As you know, um, CTF has been highly engaged in sponsoring the NF2 State of the Art Conference. We have 54 publications high-level peer review publications that are the result of our investments. And we are now, we have worked or are working with at least six pharmaceutical and biotech companies. As you know, you may say, I've never heard about it. Um, the reason why we're silent about it is because when you start working with these companies, they make you say, or they make you sign secrecy agreements. So that is why we have to be careful what we say and what we can't say. I can just guarantee you that there is a lot of excitement for NF2 these days in the pharmaceutical company. So going to the real topic of the day, the NF2 accelerator, the whole idea, of course, the worst accelerator is clear, is really how can we bring treatments faster to the patients that really need those treatments. The picture that you see on this slide is I think uh, really shows what kind of community we have. This is the Synodos NF2 team who came together multiple times. This is in Orlando, but it just gives you an idea that everybody is at the table, both the basic biologists the preclinical scientists and the, and the clinicians, as well as the patients are at the table. Tracy Galloway is the patient advocate sitting at the table with the NF2 um, Synodos team. So on the next slide, so what was, what was the aim of Synodos? So the, um, what we asked the community was, is it possible that we can find better treatments, better treatments, more consistent results? Not that one paper says the drug works and another paper says the drug doesn't work. It's really the, the patients that have reached out to us and says, we are confused. Can you now please tell us what is working and what is not working? The second um, thing that in fact the Synodos team has really brought to the table is, can we understand why treatments work and why they don't work? Because then we know what we can do in the next stage. And then the last one is how do these treatments work? And then there was a hope, and although I'm coming from pharmaceutical company, from a pharmaceutical industry background, I know how long it takes to get the drug actually to the clinic. So there was that careful hope that you know, maybe we can also identify a clinical candidate. That typically takes anywhere from seven to 15 years. So just to give you an indication that bringing drugs to the clinic is not something you do overnight. So on the next slide gives you just an idea of the globalization. So what happened? These little blue dots were all the labs that were in fact working individually and funded by the Children's Tumor Foundation. They decided that it is time to connect so 12 labs from seven institutions connected. And not only did they connect 
but they also shared and decided to share all their data right into the lab, into a data portal, where then CTF funded a postdoc and was actually integrating all the data that came out of that Synodos consortium. And the little box on the bottom, which says not working, and it's really important. Typically, when an experiment fails, you don't really share that with the community. So what this team decided is we also want to incorporate everything that doesn't work into this data portal so that we can actually learn from what works and what doesn't work. So what has Synodos done? I mean, I can talk for hours about Synodos, but I think the three main things that they have done is that they have really built the very first drug pipeline for NF2 so that they can quickly run drugs through NF2, the different models, so that we can bring the best drugs to the patients. They started off testing the logical NF2 drugs. So they sat around the table, agreed on which drugs make sense for NF2, have been tried in NF2, or are to be expected to work for NF2. And in fact, what was interesting is that the results of that first 19 drug into 19 different systems didn't really result in fantastic um, drugs. There was a collaboration with the National Center for Advancing uh, Translational Science to do a larger screen. So this is not to tire you with numbers and science, but I think what is important for you to understand is the size of such an endeavor. So they started testing 2,100 drugs, which is, the, which is a specific library that NCATS have assembled, which is a very impressive library. They identified 25 drugs that were working, and then they combined them with the other 25, uh, for, uh, 52 drugs, sorry, 52 drugs combined with 52 drugs. So that's another 2,700 combinations. That then has led to 176 combinations that were really interesting and working. And out of those 176, the team selected that there were 25 of those combinations that were really suitable now to go into what they call in vivo models. So those are animal models of NF2. In fact, the last step before they can go into the clinic. Because of the limitations that we had, because we were not expecting so many combinations, because of the limitations that we had in Synodos, then the team went back to the table and said, OK, out of those 25, we're going to take the four most promising combinations and we're going to test those um, in the animal models. I want to highlight that there is 25 opportunities of which only four have been really explored, right? Just for later record. OK, on the next slide, here comes Brigatane. So um, on the uh, Y axis of this graph, you see tumor volume. So the blue line basically shows if you don't give a drug, what, how quickly grows the tumor. And as you can see in these mice, this is a meningioma model. And this is what I always call the light bulb mouse, which means that when you have a tumor, when your tumor grows, the light increases. And when your tumor shrinks, light decreases. These are very interesting animal models where you can do these kinds of measurements. As you can see the vehicle, you really see a very steep blue line. If you give brigatinib, you see that the line stays horizontal. And then at point 14, so after 14 weeks of treatment, the researchers really wanted to know, is the effect of this tumor shrinkage, is that really due to brigatinib or is that due to something else, right? So they said, okay, let's do a drug holiday. It means we're not giving drug anymore. So they stopped giving drug and there you go. You almost have a same slope as the vehicle now. So the tumor really grows back. And then on week 27, they said, okay, you know what? Let's give drug again and let's see if the tumor shrinks again. And yes, there you go. The tumor shrinks again. So you, as you can imagine, this is extremely exciting information, extremely exciting data. And this is now leading to the development of the clinical trial of brigatinib, which I will talk about in a minute. The next slide is, um, I'm fighting here the whole world because I think data is sexy, but okay. So I'm always like, you know, fighting, fighting my community. Um, so Synodos, I think, delivered a lot of data. And as you can see, that is kind of the same image that you saw on the map, um, which is the data portal. In that data portal, you have the clinical trial, Brigatinib, which is the little orange star. Then you have those 21 opportunities, which were the 25 minus four that have been tested. And then there is all that stuff, if you want, that doesn't work, which were inactive drugs. So all three of those basically have 
multiple opportunities. First of all, out of the 21, is there another clinical trial candidate? Is there other drugs that we can develop? Or are those drugs basically in the animal models not working anymore? And then the results of that, will that lead to new biology, to new mechanisms, to new treatments? And also, is everything that really doesn't work, is that helping us in understanding more about the biology of NF2 so that, in fact, we have the opportunity here to bring better, better drugs to the patient? So what do we expect? We expect more treatments for NF2. And therefore, we need what is called a platform trial. And I'll explain you in a minute what a platform trial is, but that is really to deal with many opportunities quickly. So this platform trial, and you may ask, well, okay, we developed, we discovered brigatinib. I've heard that now a few months ago. Why are we not in the clinic yet? Well, basically, it is because of this reason. We are building a framework together, mainly the clinicians are building a framework platform which allows to test multiple drugs for multiple manifestations and nobody has to go on placebo, which means placebo, no drug. So we're building this ever first ever turnkey framework for NF2 clinical drug testing. And I don't know, I mean, you probably don't know, but this is both um, operationally and statistically very difficult to design. We can do it. It just takes a little bit more time. And we just want to hope that you have a little bit of patience to make sure that we do this well, because once we have built this framework once, it's like having a framework and then every drug can just be plugged into this um, big framework. We don't have to redo clinical trials for every new drug that comes in. So now we go to the accelerator. What are we announcing today? We're announcing basically three, four things. First of all, as I said before, for brigatinib, we're developing that new clinical trial um, with the clinical community, that platform trial. The second thing is um, we, we will um, release funds today to make sure that the 21 drugs is there anyone who can fish out a new brigatinib out of the 20 far, 21 remaining drugs that have been considered active but could not be tested within Sinodos because of the budget restrictions? So that will be launched in the form of drug discovery initiatives. As you saw, the graph looks really good. So we want more faster models. So we're also uh, funding faster models. And the other thing we're really interested in is that once we have all those drugs that are active in mice, what if we end up with too many? And that is why we're also investing, in fact, leveraging the investments of the NIH to also fund the um, uh, characterization of the NF2 PIC model. And then to understand more biology, we always say, let the Einstein get out of the woods. Let's also have some biology awards. So we are fundraising also for a specific YIA NF2, Young Investigator Award for NF2 for 2020. And then last but not least, we really have a very good and exciting data now that um, the NF2 gene therapy and also the Business Advisory Council is really excited about to fund an NF2 gene therapy um, within a company. So with that, what are we looking at? It's a $2.3 million um, proposal. As you can see, the, for the clinical trial, the $350,000 has been raised. The PIC model, the $70,000 has been raised. And as you can see, there is the other, upper, has been fully raised. Those two with the, with the ticks have been fully raised. For all the other opportunities, we have started raising the money. And on the last slide, this is the funding progress that we have made. So of the $2.3 million, we have raised $753,000. Um, a lot of the money came from Kathy and Tim, from the, from the Toms family, Kathy and Jim Toms, Nicole and Roland Toms. We've also had some very generous donations from Carol Harrison Callagher and from Beth and John Morris. So there is still, as you can see, there is still $1.607,000 to be raised. And I feel that we can do that together. Um, so on the last slide, do you want to help NNF? There are one main thing is, of course, donate to the ctf.org and NF2. 
But one of the important things as well for NF2 is let's get the word out. Repeat, retweet, repost. Thank you so much. Thank you, Annette. Um, so that is the end of the formal part of the presentation. I'm going to stop sharing our screen here. And um, we're going to ask you, whoever is listening, to submit questions. You can submit them through the chat function. Or if there's anyone who would like to talk, uh, we're not going to unmute everyone at the same time. We, we've got almost 100 people, I think, here, about 80 people who are on. So I'd worry about audio feedback. But if there's anyone who would like to say anything, we're happy to unmute you, and then we'll probably put you back on mute again. Um, so if anyone likes would like to submit a question, please do so. Please uh, John me, Morris would like to be unmuted. OK, one second, John. Let's find you. OK, John, you should be unmuted. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Go ahead, John. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. So Annette, thank you. That's a terrific overview. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is John Morris, and my wife, Beth, and I uh, have a son, our youngest son, Jack, who was diagnosed with NF2 10 years ago. Uh, he's 21 now, and he's undergone two vestibular schwannomas, um, both successful, albeit uh, he's now deaf in one ear as a result of one of the surgeries. Um, and he has... Uh, uh, spinal cord that's riddled with small tumors as well as a number of small tumors in his extremities. Uh, if you met our son Jack, you would, uh, uh, he would appear to you to be as absolutely charismatic and vibrant and normal as you would expect any 21-year-old young man to or hope any 21-year-old young man to be. Um, and that being said, you know, he knows that he's got these this situation these tumors growing in his body that have a high probability of of affecting um, his life uh, even more so in the future so we've been dedicated to ctf for many years now uh, we met annette many years ago we've been happy to continue to contribute um, at the uh you know to the to the level of our means and expect that we'll continue to do so uh, for the foreseeable future. And, and I can tell you that it, as a lay person, a non-scientific person, much of what Annette describes, uh, and I actually, she does a great job, excuse me, dumbing it down <laughs> for people like me, um, but it, it's, uh, it's just really encouraging to see an organization who's um, doing everything they can to bring it academia and companies together and to really try and accelerate drug therapies and you know now CRISPR type technology and just the, the getting the scientific community to engage and focus on this has been really really gratifying and it, and it gives me hope that there's a day in the future when people will uh, either be able to treat their NF2 uh, much more effectively than they can through the crude, crude mechanism of surgery that exists today, or God willing that they'll, you know, we'll come up with a way to try and uh, eradicate or somehow change the genotype to the level where uh, it no longer is an issue for future generations. So Annette and team, thank you very much for everything you're doing. And we look forward to continuing to be part of the solution. Thank you so much, John. This is, um, yeah, I can tell you that when I hear all the stories of the NF2 friends, I can guarantee you that I hate NF2 just like you do. Thank you. And, um, and it's very inspiring because these people are young and are going through hell. And I'm the first one to, I'm per per personally passionate. And I can tell you that we have a whole foundation that is, personally committed and passionate to make sure that we end NF, all forms of NF. Great. So we have a few more questions that have been typed in. And then if anyone else wants to speak, we'll ask you to, to just type in and let us know. So John, I'm going to put you back on mute um, for the moment. Uh, so a few questions that have come in, you could, some, I don't know if you can all read them or not. One of them is from Jesse Zink. I love what you all are doing. What are the main ways to donate? 
And uh, we're going to turn that over to our Chief Advancement Officer, Michelle Perpisny. She's here in the room with us as well. Um, Thank you, everybody. And of course, I love that question. And if we on that last slide that uh, Annette showed, there is a link directly to donate to this particular campaign, uh, ctf.org slash endnf2. Um, certainly, we'd love to hear all of your ideas, which you can send to info at ctf.org. Um, and we would love to engage you all in fundraising specifically for this project by hosting events in your home, and as well, you can get involved with the organization through doing a walk or a run or hosting a bake sale, nothing too big or too small. Um, everything, every dollar goes directly to the mission and we're, we're thrilled with everybody in the community helping us raise these funds. But again, specifically to donate to this particular project, it is ctf.org slash donate uh, slash end NF2. Okay, uh, another question. So I'm just going to grab what I see here. And if, uh, again, forgive me if we miss any, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Has Bergotinib been tested in other mouse models, for example, Dr. Clapp's model? Yes, so I didn't want to get, Randy, thank you so much for that question. I didn't want to get into the technicalities of the um, Sinodos Consortium, but there were um, 19 different cell lines that were coming from. Um, Florida, Ohio, um, Harvard, um, and I think Germany. And I, I apologize to the researchers if I forgot one of the institutions because there were um, so many. Uh, for the mouse models, there was the mouse model of Long Cheng, was the meningioma model, which is a light bulb model. And then there is, of course, Dr. Clapp's model, which is the um, Schwannoma model. So yes, the answer is absolutely yes. And a related question from Marianne Powers, was Brigatinib shown to decrease tumor size for meningiomas? Yes, so the, the graph that I showed you um, earlier in the slides, and I'm sorry if I walked maybe too quickly through it, that was in the meningioma model. And what was interesting about Brigatinib is that it's working both in meningioma and schwannoma. Because one of the big discoveries of the Sinodos Consortium is that some drugs may work for meningioma and not for vestibular schwannoma and the other way around. So it has really been um, interesting to see that the biology is sometimes different. And um, for the moment, so today, we are opening up the entire Sinodos data set, um, which contains um, a, an enormous amount of information, both um, drug screening, drug testing information, whether it's working or whether it's not working, and also by which method, by which mechanism it is working. So there is a ton of, um, of information out there. And uh, Randy has a follow-up question. What will the FDA say about using the meningioma model to predict efficacy no. of schwannomas? Oh, abs um, yeah, no, absolutely. The, so the, the, the model, was, the, the drug was both tested in meningioma and in schwannoma. Um, it is just that the meningioma model is, uh, the schwannoma model, sorry, is what is called an endpoint model. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to take this offline, Randy, but the drug was obviously tested in both meningioma and schwannoma. But, the, but in the meningioma, it's just easier to visualize because you can follow the growth of the tumor because of the light bulb that is in the tumor. Okay. Um, please feel free to keep submitting your questions, or if you want to speak, let us know. We do have a question uh, about if we're coordinating efforts with other NF2 organizations, such as BioSolutions. And uh, I think Michelle is going to take that one. Um, thank you. And, and yes, actually, we have been in touch with Nicole and we are working with her in terms of how the two organizations can can work together. Um, so we thank you for that question. Thank you from Marianne Powers. Um, we'll, uh, we'll keep this open for a little bit more. We, we don't, you don't have to ask questions. You can also follow up with any one of us or, or submit to info at ctf.org. Um, uh, we do have another question so maybe there is one one important thing that um we have seen in the nf1 field is that there we have really come together and i really thank the person for asking that question about collaborating across funders in the nf1 community we have really um come together 
and collaborate. And I can tell you that it goes so much faster if we collaborate and strategize together. Um, we are now submitting actually a paper that really describes the collaboration and the strategic planning between the, between the different organizations. So yes, the answer is we, we absolutely need to do more. We have a question asking about a little more detail on the gene therapy strategy. Yeah, so the reason why we have, um, and this is ongoing now for a couple of years, the reason why we have been silent about the gene therapy um, is, as, um, as you know, Randy, it is a, once you sign secrecy agreements with companies, you have to be very careful what you can say and what you cannot say. Um, we have done some preliminary studies in 2016, which really made this um, uh, study even stronger today. The results are pretty impressive. Um, and today, this company is coming back to us um, for extra funding in order to, um, to, to do the next, the next level of studies. Um, I'm sorry if I can't say more, but you know that it is, it, once you enter into um, interactions and discussions with biotech and pharmaceutical companies, it is a little, um, it becomes sensitive. So I, um, it's not that I don't want to say more, it's just that unfortunately I can't. But we will be able to announce hopefully soon, um, well, at least give you some higher level, a press release that they are happy with us releasing. Okay. Um, we have uh, two people who have raised their hands. I think Ursula Searle is first. I'm going to let her uh, speak. And then Tracy Galloway will be after. So Ursula, you're unmuted. Um, go ahead. Ursula, are you there? She's talking. Yeah. Unmute. Do again. It, 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 you can't. Un it's, Ursula, it keeps, Ursula, you may no, have it's, to. Um, it's your. It's your thing. It's. It stays on unmute. Are uh, Ursula? Maybe you want to check on your computer if you didn't mute your your own. Um, yeah, because we, we've unmuted you, Ursula. We can't hear you. If you want to write something at the bottom, um, we'll respond. In the meantime, I'm going to unmute uh, Tracy Galloway uh, and let her talk while we figure out the connection with Ursula. Tracy, go ahead. Same issue. Okay, hang on a second, guys. I don't know what's going on here. Tracy, try again. Nothing. We can't hear you. Sorry. Um, Try to move to panelists. Yeah, one second. Let's, let's, yeah, there you go, Tracy. Simon, this is Tracy. Can you hear me? We can now. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Okay, wonderful. Um, hello, everyone. This is Tracy Galloway, and um, I would just like to say that um, I thank so much for this presentation. I thought it was well put together and easy to understand. Um, as Annette said, I was the patient representative for the very first Sonotos model that took a leap of faith on behalf of my husband, Mark, and I to understand um, the model and what we were investing in. At the time, I was unsure about how it was going to go, and it really turned out better than we could have hoped for. The work that was done now must continue for us to bring more drugs to the clinic for our family members who we love, who we need to find treatment for. And to do that, it's gonna take the community and everyone willing to help participate in it. And in saying that, I would like to offer a $100,000 match gift to anybody who is willing to help us fund this, get this, um, this initiative. And I'd like to do that in honor of my daughter, McKinnon, who is this year's National Children's Tumor at Foundation Ambassador. She's done a great job with it, and she's doing a great job with it. And um, we need to put an end to NF2. 
And that's that. <laughs> we have a surprise for you. <laughs> so McKinnon is here with us in the office today. So, um, she, uh, McKinnon, do you want to tell us where, where you were last week? Because you just arrived back in New York. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, last week, I went home for my Avastin treatment. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a type of chemotherapy. And so I go home and I take my treatment and then I come back. But I feel really lucky to have these medications because you know, 10 years ago, we really didn't have much. And so I've been really excited. This new drug coming out, I'm like so excited about it. So I'm just, that's all I pretty much have to say. And I really appreciate everybody for helping out. Thank you. And Tracy, I just want to say thank you again. You're just such an incredible champion in, um, of the NF2 community in general. I, you know, it's amazing. I have no words. I'm sorry, but it's amazing. Well, Annette, 10 years ago, I would have dreamed to have something like this put together. I mean, it was a dream. And you've helped to make it a reality. The foundation has helped to make this a reality. And I'm very appreciative of it. And I know many other people are too. So thank you. Thank you. We're gonna we're gonna try to unmute Ursula again. Um, Ursula, you're unmuted. Try try speaking now. I'm sorry, Ursula. I don't I, I don't know why this is not um promoter to panelist. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Hang We're on, promoting you to panelist. Ursula, wait a second. <laughs> ah, allowed to talk. Oh, no. Ursula, are you there? Ursula, you, you were just promoted to panelist. Hmm. This is so bizarre. Ursula, I'm sorry why this is not coming through. Um, if you can type in um, your question or comment, we'll, we'll read it off to the group. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not reading through. We're going to grab a few more questions here. Um, will this webinar be posted online and captioned? Yes, it will. It's already captioned, uh, so we'll post it. Um, let's see. Uh, huh. The mechanism of action of brigatinib. This is such a good question. So um, to be fully transparent here, um, the uh, original idea was that brigatinib has been approved, as some of you may know, for lung cancer, I think in 2017, and was um, hitting a mechanism called ALK. Um, what the Sinodos team discovered is that that was probably not the mechanism in NF2. And as a follow-up um, on their own grants, some of the researchers have got together and figured out what the mechanism of the real mechanism of brigatinib is in NF2. And that is really with the aim also of not only understanding how brigatinib is working, but also if now we can start developing second generation drugs that are even better than brigatinib. So I don't want to turn around the pot. We know what the mechanism is. The researchers are literally writing up the paper now um, so I have to be careful. I can't really say what it is, but I can tell you that it has been figured out what the mechanism is. And as soon as we can tell, we will plaster the walls of the world with it because it's a good one. Is there a potential time estimate right now for bringing Brigatinib to clinical trial? Good question. Um, we are, um, so just to give you a, a clear idea of where we stand, we have the, we're the protocol, we're writing the protocol now. Well, I like the way I'm not writing the protocol. We are funding also a consultant to help writing the protocol. Um, the protocol is expected to be ready um, early summer. And what we hope is to have the first patients on trial, but don't come kill me if it's not going to happen, but we should have everything in place by the end of the year because we need to recruit the clinical trial centers, then we need to get the investigational research, uh, the, um, uh, the IRB approvals of, this, of different institutions. So there is a couple of months that is still going by, but we hope to have the first patient within this year on drug. We're receiving a few just sort of commentaries. We'll read a few of them. Uh, one is from Aude in, uh, in France. Uh, congratulations everyone, and thank you so much for helping the NF community. I'll do my very best to help find funds for this NF2 campaign. 
Thank you, Aude. I don't know if you want to... So I just wanted yeah. to say, first of all, Aude, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Merci to be part of this um, uh, webinar today. Um, so Aude is um, in, uh, a patient advocate in France, but she's not just a patient advocate. She's, in fact, an advisor to the European CTF board. Um, she joined us last year. Um, in a month of getting engaged within the NF community, she organized a reception where the former French president was present. So, um, and some very important musicians. And so, um, all thank you so much. Um, from ACE, uh, would Brigatinib be effective at ependiomas? Um, that is to be seen. What we have, um, the animal model testing that has happened is um, meningioma and schwannoma. So, it's to be seen. Okay. Um, Tracy, you're receiving a lot of love on here, uh, rightfully so. I don't think I can read all of them. There's about seven or eight posts uh, for people thanking you uh, for, for what you've done today, the surprise announcement of the match. Um, the mechanism released. Um, they are literally writing the paper now. Um, so everything depends on the time of review of the journals that are publishing these papers, right? So we we hope soon. So Marco Giovannini, I see you've raised your hand. I assume that means you want to say something. We've unmuted you. Go ahead, Marco. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Buongiorno. This is Marco Giovannini. Hello, everybody. Well, first of all, I want to <coughs> congratulate Annette and the Children's Tumor Foundation for this wonderful initiative. Um, we are such a small community, we need cohesion, we need the, the resources to have, I'm sorry, my voice is down, I have a call, but we need all the resources, human capital to, uh, to fight this disease. So uh, efforts like this are essential uh, to move forward. Um, a special thanks to Tracy, to the Toms, I've known Roland for a long time, and I know how committed they are to uh, NF2, and of course, all the other uh, patient, patient advocates and family who contributes uh, who contribute to this, uh, to this effort. Um, a special mention, I'm very happy to hear that uh, there will be specific funding for the Young Investigators Award. Uh, it is an issue in our community. We need younger scientists. We need to train them. We need to keep them in the field. They have to become the future uh, NF2 scientists and clinicians. So this is a wonderful uh, initiative and we need more of those. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Marco, for your comment. You know you are a a big researcher in the field, so we need more, more, more little Marcos, <laughs> more next generation Marcos. Yeah. <laughs> Keep training them, Marco. Well, send them to me. <laughs> well, we'll we'll do the fundraising. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, so we're getting I think a couple of questions about how, how does one find out about clinical trials and how to register and things like that. So maybe we could just talk about that for a second. Yeah, so there, there, are multiple, there are multiple ways about registering for clinical trials. Sometimes the, um, it's through your centers, but we have created, I don't know if you are aware of that, we have created a couple of, uh, of years ago a, an initiative called the NF Registry. Um, maybe you can, can you show it on the, or is that not possible? It's okay, no. it doesn't matter. So the NF, the NF registry is, if you want a database with people that report themselves, it's really in your own power, whether you want to participate or not. And this is all within, let's say, the spirit of the Children's Tumor Foundation, where we want to educate the patients, but then empower them to act as, an, as a client of healthcare rather than as a than as a victim right so we um, we have created that nf patient registry it is called nfregistry.org you can register and when there is when there are clinical trials so you have a couple of questions that you have to answer about your condition and when there are the clinical trials are announced on nfclinicaltrials.gov our patient uh, our client uh, no client sorry our clinical program director goes into the registry and reaches out to the patients that may be eligible 
for certain of those, uh, of those clinical drugs. So the idea of the registry is that the only one who has access to the data of the patients is our clinical program director and myself. So we will reach out to you and say like, hey, do you know that there is a drug that may be good for you? Talk to your clinician. Then you talk to your clinician about it. And then it is up to you, the patient, again, as the client of healthcare, to reach out to the principal investigator, most probably through your clinician, to participate into that clinical trial. Today, we have almost 9,000 patients that have registered in the NF registry, and it's really becoming a tool for us to be able to inform you of what is happening in the clinical space so you don't have to do that yourself. You can, of course, also go yourself to clinicaltrials.gov to follow which new trials come out. But that is a service that we are providing to our patient community of those patients that, of course, are registered through the NF registry. Great. Thank you. Um, so I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, we'll, get, we'll give another minute or so if anyone has anything they want to add in. Um, oh, we just got one more from Randy. So yeah, the how does the data on brigatinib in mice uh, compare to previous drug candidates? Um, I can tell you that I've never seen the NF2 research community as enthusiastic as when they saw the results of brigatinib. Um, always, we have to, of course, always stay a little skeptical um, because, of course, we need to see if that data translates into the clinic, right? It's always the same problem. Uh, not, of course, there is a lot of data now that says that this drug is good. The mechanism makes sense to NF2. So there is a lot of, um, uh, let's say, uh, confidence that this may translate into the clinic. But as you, Randy, know, we are, I've been in drug discovery and development for about 20 years. And, you know, there is always that dissolution that something, although looks very hopeful, is actually not working. So um, we have to be realistic. But let's say that the team was extremely enthusiastic when they saw that data. Now, we have a note from Roland Toms. Thank you, Roland, and the Toms family, both for supporting this and for being online with us today. Roland wrote, many thanks to the CTF team for pushing things forward. After years of hope, it is great to see actual action. We need to keep supporting the research. Yeah, and, and I completely agree with you, um, Roland. First of all, thank you so much. Your family has, as you, as some of you probably have seen in our newsletter, has massively supported this initiative with a very large donation. Um, and it is absolutely crucial that we keep doing both, you know, push drugs through, try to identify them as quickly as possible, but let's never forget that we still need to understand quite a lot of biology in order to make sure that we are doing the right things for the NF2 community and get the best drugs that are available to the, um, to the NF patients. Um, so there is um, another person who puts in a very important note, please take care also of the European NF2 patients. How can we join your clinical trials? UK people have Garrett Evans. We have nobody. Can CTF in Europe help in some way? Thank you, Tracy and, and Marco. Um, I, oh, can you go up one second? Um, so yeah, uh, so in Italy, I mean, I think in Italy, you are very blessed with Laura Papi in Florence. She's really good as an NF2 and schwannomatosis clinician. Um, we are active in Europe, as, may, as some of you may know. We have launched CTF Europe in uh, November in Brussels. Um, we are very active at the um, European Commission and European Community, and both also at the European Federation for Pharmaceutical Industries, because Europe really offers opportunities that we do not have in the US. So I can tell you that we're working really hard to make sure that we get a voice um, for the NF1 and NF2 and schwannomatosis patients in Europe. I can't stress enough that we really should stay really together in the three conditions to make sure that we make a difference because when we are, when we are more, we have a louder voice and I'm using the loud voice in, in Europe for a moment. Um, I'm going to Europe at the end of June to go again just after the European elections to try to see what can be done with the European Commission. But it is, there's a lot, a lot of opportunities and we are, we're trying really hard. And Ode is also extremely active in Europe these days, 
Um, so all the thank you. We're just reading through some questions here. So yeah, there is an important question here about the um, Young Investigator Award um, funding that we will be launching. Thank you, Vidya, uh, for mentioning this. It is um, both NF2 and schwannomatosis will be included in the um, Young Investigator Award 2020 round. Okay. Uh, Ursula, I don't see Ursula on here anymore. We would be trying to get her back on, but I don't know if you're still on the call. Um, if you are, please just type in at the bottom and let us know. And uh, otherwise, I, I think we're coming to an end. Let me give you guys another 30 seconds or so. If you have a question or anything you want to type in or speak, please do let us know. Um, otherwise, I just uh, before ahead. yeah before we hang up, um, I just wanted to give a real shout out to the Senodos team. Um, it when we launched Senodos in 2014, um, collaborative science was there, but not that much. Um, and the NF2 Sinodos team has really taken the risk, um, taken that leap of faith and say, okay, we will share data, we will collaborate, um, let's just do it. And um, this is where we are now. So, I mean, having science without money doesn't make sense, but having money without science doesn't make sense as well. So I just wanted to say, to give a very big thanks to the um, NF2 community, um, the NF2 research community, um, I can tell you these people care. Great. Um, so I think, I think we're coming to an end here. Um, if we've missed anything, please let us know. You can reach out to us at info at ctf.org or frankly, just go to our website and all our names and addresses, our email addresses and phone numbers are there. Feel free to reach out directly. Uh, we're just putting up that link one more time, ctf.org slash endnf2 um, for uh, more information about the accelerator. Um, or if you just visit ctf.org slash nf2, uh, you'll also find um, more information about talk, you know, uh, fact sheets and things like that that you can use throughout the day. We encourage you to stay online with us today. Uh, all throughout the day, we'll be posting videos um, and fact sheets and more information about the things that are related in particular to the nf2 community. We will post um, this recording. Uh, we'll try later today, but if not, give us till tomorrow. We just want to make sure it's properly captioned. Uh, if you're on Instagram, our, our friend McKinnon Galloway, our ambassador, will be on We've given her control of our Instagram for the day. Uh, oh, she's oh. So, so, the <laughs> stories. Um, so, uh, so have, we're going to look forward to a little fun there. Um, but again, thank you everybody for being with us today. We look forward to doing more of these in the future. Please do send us feedback. Uh, either through that info at CTF email or directly. And um, have a wonderful uh, NF2 Awareness Day. Thank you very much.